So I'm gonna talk about homogeneous spaces as in previous talk and uh, about local global principles as, as in all the talks of today. Uh, so let's start by the introduction. So in all this talk, K will be a number field. I will denote by omega the set of places of K. Um, I will denote by, well, let, let X be a variety defined over K. Um, so I will need the Brouwer group. So you, I, I guess you all know what the Brouwer group is. We already saw it. And um, I will just define the unramified Brouwer group. Well, we saw the definition of unramified cohomology in, in the lectures by Elena. So uh, maybe the easiest way to define it will be to take the, uh, the Brouwer group of a smooth compactification of X. It exists because we are over number fields. So XC is a smooth compactification. Or it can be defined via residu residues uh, as we, we have seen before, compactification. Okay, so you, you, you know that we can define, the, well, I will use two kind of brown manian obstructions. First, uh, because my, my variety is not supposed to be proper, to be important. So um, we have two pairings. Uh, first, the pairing between adelic points of X and the Brouwer group of X. And the second one is uh, the pairing between this set, which will just be the product of all places of local points times the unramified broader group of X with value in Q mod Z. Of course, if X is proper, then those two pairings are the same. Uh, but in, in my talk, X will be a homogeneous space of a linear algebraic group, so it won't be proper in general. So. So we have to distinguish these two sets are not the same. And these two sets have natural topology. This one, this is the adelic topology. And this one is just the direct product topology. These topologies are different, and it will be very important in, in the following. Um, well, let me also recall you uh, the following uh, subset of the Brouwer group that will be useful in this talk. Um, so, we have the broad group of X. Well, we can always quotient by uh, what we denoted by Brouwer zero of X, which is the image of broad group of the base field. Inside it, we can take uh, the algebraic Brouwer group, which is elements that vanishes of the algebraic closure. And then we can introduce several subgroups so Russian B, uh, omega of X, which is the subgroup of, of the broad group of X um, consisting of elements that are uh, trivial uh, almost, well, at, at almost all places. And eventually, we have this Russian B of X, which was the one in, in Parimala's talk, uh, elements that are constant locally uh, everywhere. So this has, these are all the groups that I will use in, in, the, in the talk. And now I can introduce uh, four properties, four approximation properties for, for X, four local global properties. Local global properties. So the first one will be, of course, 
the usual HACCP principle. So given fix a subgroup of the broad group, and we can ask if the existence of a an adelic point orthogonal to B implies the existence of a rational point. So then we will say that the Hasse principle holds. Second property will be the property of weak approximation, which uh, Olivier introduced in his talk. So uh, is uh, X of K dense in the Brahman set? Um, Oh, sorry. So I take this set here with a direct topology. And uh, so here B has to be a subgroup of the unramified part so that this makes sense. So is, it, is the Brahman Manning obstruction to weak approximation the only one? So I will denote it by WA, weak approximation. So these are the main questions, we, we saw a lot of conjectures about them, and um, well, many cases are, are still open. And I, w I will introduce two other ones, which are, which will be the same as the two first ones if X is proper, but here will be different. So this, has, this will be the integral versions of this, of this one. So first will be uh, the integral has a principle. So I'll let X, curly X, well, uh, B, um, uh, B as a, well, a model of X, so say, um, um, flat scheme, finite type, over the ring of integers, of S integers. And, and we can ask the same question as this one, but for integral points. Okay, so question, yeah. Is, is Sorry. Well, it depends. <laughs> if here it's a subgroup of the unramified, here it could be. Okay, so in two, it's in the other one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here. Sure. Thank you. Otherwise, the sum here is infinite. It doesn't make sense. Uh, so I take uh, a model of X. Uh, said that, of, of course. The generic fiber is just our initial variety. Uh, we can ask the integral version of this one, that is, uh, if the product, so if we have local integral points, Orthogonal to the broad group, does it imply that we have uh, a global integral point? So this is, this is pro property number three, and so this will be called, say, integral Hasse principle. And four, uh, it will be the integral version of weak approximation, which we will call strong approximation. So uh, I can, well, it's a bit more technical to, to, to formulate, but uh, so take, as before, a model of, uh, as before, a model of X. And uh, um, we can ask whether uh, the closure, uh, um, yeah, um, denote by uh, x of k bar s, the closure of x um, of x k of rational points in. Well, not exactly in the set uh, of adelic points, because generally it's a discrete subset, so it won't be very interesting. But this set, where we, we, we will remove a finite number of places. So you take the closure in, uh, 
So how do I write it? Um, well, the restricted product for all places not in S of XKV. So this is um, a subset of this one. Um, Well, this, this is a restricted product. So this is elements that are integral uh, at almost all places, okay? With a restricted product topology, okay? So I want to, uh, to take the closure inside this set. And uh, the question will be, uh, do we have um, is this, does this closure contains um, the Brownman in set in the following sense. So you can take the Brownman in set uh, like this, and then you can consider the projection of this one to, uh, but you, you just forget places in S, okay? Where pi S is just the map from X, A, K, to uh, this set here. Concretely, what does it mean? If this is true, you, so you take a, a point in the Brahman set, the usual Brahman set here, then you can approximate it by a point in K so that, well, you can approximate it at a finite number of places and you know that you can um, impose that the, the, the rational point is integral outside these places, except perhaps in places in S. So you don't say anything about what happens in places in S. So you remove S. If you don't do this, uh, well, this almost never happens. If you take the whole, the whole, whole, whole places. Okay, so this will, this will be called strong approximation. It really means that you can approximate local points by integral points somehow, except at a finite number of places. Okay, so these are the four properties that I will discuss. Of course, if X is proper, one and three are essentially the same, and two and four are essentially the same. Okay, so, so of course, for an arbitrary variety, these questions are uh, either, well, we, we have counter examples to all those, all those properties. But uh, we have to focus on special families. So question. Uh, what happens if X is a homogeneous space of a linear algebra of a linear algebraic group? Say G. Uh, are connected. So this will be the main questions of this talk. And so the answer is, uh, well, we know some positive case uh, that I will recall now. So what do we know? So known results. Um, concerning questions one and two, we have uh, a positive answer to both questions, as uh, well as Parimala explained before. Assuming uh, so, let me fix the notations here, maybe. So you have G acting on X, homogeneous space, and we will um, fix a point over an algebraic closure, and we'll denote by H bar the stabilizer of this point. Stabilizer in G of X. This is a subgroup of G defined over the algebraic closure. So, th so we have positive answers to questions one and two. If uh, H bar, so, Geometric stabilizer I assume to be connected 
or abelian, say. Well, essentially. In the abelian case, you have to put some little assumptions about G, but essentially, this is the main result. So this is due to, uh, uh, well, the general result is due to Borovoy. Uh, don't remember the year. But uh, it is, of course, based on lots of results, uh, including the uh, Hasse principle for semi-simple simply connected, well, for torsors under principle, uh, under, uh, under semi-simple simply connected groups, uh, due to Knesser, Platonov, uh, and so on. Uh, so this is uh, well, the only case that, it, well, this is quite general, but not general enough. Only case that, that is known, essentially. And for questions uh, three and four, uh, we also have positive answers. Uh, under the same assumption. So essentially, if the stabilizer is connected, then everything is fine. Uh, otherwise, we don't know anything. Uh, so this is a bit more recent than Borovoy results. So first case was due to uh, Coliotelen and uh, Shufei. Then uh, the case of Tori was done by Arari. Um, and the general case, so putting together the Coyote and Chouffe and the Torres case, so this general statement is a result by Borovoy and myself in uh, 2010 or something. But essentially, the assumption is exactly the same as classical, the classical result by Borovoy. So, of course, now the question is, could we remove this Connectedness assumption or abelianness assumption. So, what can we say uh, in the general case? Um, so, let me first mention that uh, in a recent, uh, uh, this is a recent result by uh, Giancarlo Lucchini Artece. Uh, So maybe 2015. He proved that uh, the general questions, uh, so say questions, say question two, for instance, uh, uh, the answer uh, for question two, well, question two, for general homogeneous spaces reduces. Uh, to question two for homogeneous spaces with finite stabilizers. Uh, for finite stabilizer. So this is a motivation to, to study the case of finite stabilizer. Essentially, this is the, the only remaining case. Um, if you take borrower results, if you put uh, an, an hypothetic result for finite stabilizers, and you have positive answer for general homogeneous spaces. So we will concentrate now on finite stabilizers. Um, so now, assume H bar is finite. Um, sorry. Um, and now, in this setting, let me mention a motivation. Well, there is a motivation that is to generalize this classical results. Another motivation in the finite, uh, in the finite, finite group setting is the following. So, uh, if the answer to question uh, two is positive, For finite stabilizers, and even for 
for a simple homogeneous space that is just SLN quotiented by quotiented by H, where H is a constant group, constant finite group, then uh, then H is a Galois group of a K. Then H is a Galois group of a K. And, uh, and more, that is, we can, we can realize H as a Galois group of a K with um, prescribed ramification. That is, we can um, choose arbitrary, almost arbitrary, except at the finite number of places. You choose arbitrary local extensions with Galois group, a subgroup of H. Then you can realize them as a global extension with group H and with uh, local conditions uh, satisfied. So, of course, so uh, I won't prove here that uh, the answer to this question is yes in general because it would imply um, it would imply uh, a positive answer to the inverse Galois problem over any number field for any finite group and much more. So, so I won't prove anything like this. But this is mot a motivation to study this, this question. Um, so, okay, so this is the global picture, the introduction. So let's now try to prove something. So I will concentrate on the, unfortunately, the only thing I, I can prove is um, concern questions three and four. So the, the integral versions, which are easier. So I will concentrate on uh, um, integral Roraman in abstractions. Uh, uh, in, in, the, in the finite case here. And unfortunately, again, the only result uh, I can prove uh, are negative results. That is uh, theorem one. Um, so you take P a prime number, you take a P group H. Um, uh, non-commutative, sorry, non-abelian P group. Um, say denote is ordered by P to the N. Um, you take any finite subset S of omega, uh, a finite set of places, an arbitrary one, uh, and, and denote by x. Well, you can always embed any finite group to some SLN for n sufficiently big, and you, think you can take the quotient of SLN by h. Okay, I will only consider this kind of homogeneous spaces, and uh, assume uh, that p to the n plus 1, the, 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 the p to the n plus 1 roots of unity are contained in k. Okay, so assume that your number field is sufficiently big. Then uh, one can find uh, a point in the Brouwer set, so with the whole Brouwer group here, um, such so that, uh, well, it is not. That is not approximate, that could not be approximated by a rational point. So um, if you remove places in S, um, and this point is not in the closure for the um, adelic topology of uh, rational points. So the answer to question uh, three, I guess, uh, four, sorry, the answer to strong approximation is, is no. For any, well, I, I took P groups, so essentially for any, say, nilpotent group, um, uh, if you assume that it is non-commutative, of course, because in borrower result, or in uh, this result here, if the group is, is supposed to be commutative, the, the answer is yes. So if you remove this assumption, 
this is completely false. Um, so the Brahman, the Brahman obstruction is not the only one. Um, but of course, it does, not, it does not say it doesn't say anything about uh, the, ra the, the similar questions for rational points. Unfortunately, but uh, at least it's a, it says that this result here is somehow optimal. Um, well, remark. There are also examples like this uh, of a queue. Because this assumption here does not hold of a queue, but uh, we can construct examples of a queue with a stabilizer, which is essentially the, the first uh, well, non trivial, uh, uh, non abelian P group, which is uh, the quaternion group of order 8. So really explicit example, uh, you can compute everything and the, the weak, strong approximation with Brahman obstruction fail. And the second result I want to mention will, will just say that uh, the integral as a principle also fails, as you could expect from this, this one. Uh, so same assumptions. And you assume us also that uh, P is invertible. So P is not, uh, P is, P is not, P, uh, P, I'm sorry, P is, no. Uh, so P is in S and um, the Picard group of the ring of S integers uh, has um, P torsion. You make these assumptions, uh, then um, so for any uh, non-abelian P group, uh, uh, one can find an embedding of H in SL uh, N of K, an X, curly X, a model. Uh, a smooth, separated uh, model of X. And it's even better. It's, it's curly X will be himself a homogeneous space under a model of SLN. OK? Uh, of finite type. Uh, of finite type. Of finite type. So you can find a model of X. So X is just as before SLN presented by H, by this embedding here. So that um, so if the following condition holds. First, uh, curly X is a homogeneous space over the ring of integers. Uh, it's a homogeneous space of the group, or, well, SL, some SL of V, where V is a, uh, is a vector bundle over the ring of integers. So this is just a group scheme of type uh, AN, okay? Um, and two, uh, of course it fails to satisfy the integral as a principle with Brahman instruction. So we have local points everywhere. Integral local points, orthogonal to the broader group, but no integral point. So the answer to question three uh, is no. Uh, yeah, let me remark that, um, well, such example exists. I mean, there are several conditions. You have to fulfill them together, and it is possible. Uh, there exist uh, such examples. You just have to find some field satisfying all these conditions. 
And uh, so for instance, you take uh, uh, P uh, near regular prime. So say the first one should be 37. Uh, so that to you, you could have some P torsion in the Picard group. And uh, you take S, well, you take for K, you just add the P to the N plus one roast roots of unity. And uh, you take the only place above P in K, and you have to you check that uh, all the assumptions are satisfied. So there are really examples of. So this theorem is not, not empty. Um, okay. So how do you prove such, uh, such results? So I will only sketch the proof. Uh, so proof. Um, the first step is to compute, of course, to compute the Brouwer group. Um, I compute the Brouwer group of X. So what is a Brouwer group of X in this uh, setting? There is a canonical isomorphism um, between central extensions, well, the group of some central extensions of um, algebraic groups, uh, extension of H by GM, isomorphism with uh, the broad group of X modulo constants. Uh, you, it, it is classical that the algebraic Brouwer group is uh, the H1 of uh, the group of characters of H. And this is a generalization of this result. Um, so, uh, how do you prove this? You just consider, uh, so you have this following, the following picture. You have SLN, you quotient by H, you have X here. So you have a, an etal cover, a Galois cover with group H. So you can consider uh, um, the spectral sequence associated to this cover. So uh, HP, H acting on HQ, uh, SLN, uh, H, uh, SLN what, what, a GM, I guess, yeah. It converts to H pi plus Q of X GM. So here you see the broad group for P plus Q, P, P plus Q equals two. And uh, while well, you, you compute this, the, the exact sequence of lower, lower degrees, and um, you immediately get, uh, you get, since SLN is semi-simple, simply connected, you have a lot of vanishing and so on. So uh, you get an isomorphism between H2 of H, H k star, and uh, so H is constant. So it's really the usual uh, group cohomology uh, stuff, isomorphic to um, essentially the broad group of X modulo constant, because the broad group of SLN is, is trivial, just constant. So. So you get this, and you, now you just have to identify this set here with this one. This is quite classical. H2 is just a set of extensions. Uh, so essentially, this is a proof of this isomorphism here. And now that we know basically the Brouwer group, we will use, um, well, we know the Brouwer group just in terms of group theory. Now we will compute this side and using a kind of descent obstruction, we'll see that uh, we will prove the, the theorem. So second step is um, the key lemma. It is as follows. So take uh, a subgroup of H. Well, H is a P group, so in a non-abelian P group, you always have um, uh, central, 
um, subgroup that is um, of order p and that, um, that is contained in the derived subgroup. This is classical uh, group theory contained in the derived subgroup. And then the morphism, the natural morphism from extensions of H, given an extension of H by GM, you can restrict it to Z. Okay? You can pull back to Z, so you get an extension, central extension of Z by GM. And this morphism is trivial. So is, this morphism is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a trivial map, is a zero map. Which means that given an extension of H by GM, when you restrict it to the, sun, to the center, it splits here, okay? As, a Gallo, as a, um, an extension of K groups. Well, it, it just means in terms of broad group that the map from the broad group of X to the, the broad group of uh, a cover defined by Z, this map is trivial. So the proof of this is just uh, really a proof this is just a computation. You, here you have an extension of groups. Well, there are k groups, but given the fact that k has contains sufficiently enough roots of unity, then essentially it reduces to uh, an extension of constant groups. So you can really compute it uh, by basic algebras, basic algebra, and uh, no, you find the splitting here. It's, it's just computation. Uh, computation uh, with uh, extensions of constant groups. So I won't give more details here. And now how do you use this lemma to prove, well, theorem one and theorem two, because the proof is essentially the same for, for both, both results. Um, Step three. Um, maybe I will just give them the main ideas of the, the geometric idea. Geometric idea. Say, for, 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 so the first two steps are the same for theorem one and theorem two. So for, I will give the geometric idea for theorem two. And, well, oh, I think it's almost the same idea. So it, it works for both theorems. So you have X. You have SLN here. You can take first the quotient by Z, the, cent the central subgroup. You get some Y. Then you quotient by some, uh, say, H prime, which is just H modulo Z. You got X, right? This is just a Galois theory. So you have this picture. And you know that the map from the so broad group of x to, so this is pi, this is pi up a star, so broad group of y, it's just a zero map, okay? So now you just have to uh, take a point, local point, in the adelic set of y, which is not orthogonal to the broad group of y, you will just uh, apply the map pi, pi, you get a point x, which will be orthogonal to x, and you have to check that. You, you cannot be approximated here, but it's quite easy. So take, take a point not, not orthogonal to the broad group of y. Well, this, this is possible. This is, uh, well, we know, we know everything explicitly, so it's quite easy to, to find. So you take a point here, not orthogonal to the broad group of y, uh, define X, V to be the image of Y, V. And it is in X, of course, it is in the analytic point of X, but it is orthogonal to the broad group of X because this map is zero, okay? So this is a, a key lemma. And now, this is, well, essentially there is a, this is a metal brower man in obstruction for people who know what, what it means. Um, 
So you do this contraction, and since the point Y was not orthogonal to the broad group here, uh, well, deduce. Well, this is this is cheating, but uh, that XV cannot be approximated. by a rational point. Um, so it, in general, it, it, it could happen that XV lifts to a twist of this torso, and that in this twist, in this twist uh, the lift will be orthogonal to the broad group of the twist, of the twisted torso. This is, uh, but this doesn't happen. This, this is hidden here. So you have to do some to be careful, and th that's the point that works for well. That's why the result is true for integral points and not for rational points. This is here that it fails for rational points. For rational points, there is a twist. Essentially, you can find a twist where the lift uh, you, you, you can lift to a, a point orthogonal to the broad group. This cannot be done for uh, integral points essentially. So uh, this is specific to. Uh, say a strong approximation or integral Hassel principle. Um, oh yeah, for okay for theorem two, this is exactly the same idea, but uh, you work over the ring of integers, so you have the models, you have the SL of your vector bundle, you have the some well, you have a torso under the SL of the vector bundle, you have the, some quotients like this. You have exactly the same picture, but over the ring of integers, and you you do essentially the same. Uh, um, Arguments. Okay. So this is the idea of the proof. So this is just somehow an integral um, etal uh, Brownian obstruction somehow. So in the in the last 15 minutes, I will mention a result very um, how you say. A very partial result for rational points. So, what can we say about uh, Brownian obstruction for a rational point? For a rational point. Um, so, so I recall that we have H finite, and we consider X just SLN modulo H for some embedding of H in, in SN. Uh, let me first mention the, that only ver the, 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 the very few cases where we know the answers to question one and two in the finite case. And then I will give you some examples that is quite uh, um, interesting, I guess. Um, so known cases. Uh, so only two known cases, I guess, in this uh, in this setting. So for questions one and two, um, if so the first one is due to Neukirch, uh, I guess in the I don't remember the year. Maybe John Carlo knows, but well, in the 80s, I guess, 70s, okay. 79 maybe. Yeah. Um, so if you assume that. Uh, the number of roots of unity in K is prime to the order of, of the finite group. So for instance, H has to be uh, of, uh, of odd order, fortunately. Uh, then uh, X satisfies, uh, satisfies weak approximation. Satisfies weak approximation. So question, uh, the answer to question two is, uh, is yes. Uh, and this is essentially the only result known in, for this question. Uh, but for instance, for the Q, you, you only have, you only have well, groups of uh, odd order. In, you miss half of the groups. Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, um, of course, uh, Neukirch assumes that H is uh, solvable. Well, this is a consequence of this assumption. 
by a very difficult theorem, but um, he uses it to prove that the group is sol solvable. Anyway, so this is uh, the result by Neukirch, and the second one is a result by a recent result by Ari, uh, uh, which concerns uh, with no assumption of this kind, but uh, if H is uh, an, an iterated semi-direct product of abelian groups, so if H is A, A1 semi-direct, A2 semi-direct, and so on, okay, with, A, with AI abelian, so you have a, a, a sequence of split extensions with a, a abelian kernel, uh, then uh, weak approximation holds also. But this is, you have no assumption about the roots of unity, of the, of the cardinality, but this is very sp special. Oh, sorry, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so the answer to question two is yes. yes. Brahman obstruction is the only one. Here, there is no Brahman binomial obstruction. You can compute the broad group, and it is just trivial. But here, you, you have to t thank you. You have to take into account the, the Brahman obstruction. But this is essentially all we know about um, what happens for rational points. And <laughs> let me mention that now the last result that will. Um, um, show you how the situation is different from the case of connected stabilizers. So uh, first recall that in Borova result, uh, about, um, so I will only talk about weak approximation, not, not Hassel principles. So. In Borova result about weak approximation, um, you don't have to take the whole Brouwer group to, to get weak approximation. Uh, we don't need the whole Brouwer group, but just, but just the subgroup that I introduced, B omega of X, which is a finite uh, group, and which is contained in the algebraic one. So this is a finite, and this can be computed quite explicitly, as uh, Parimala mentioned, by some Tchafavich group of some complex of tori and so on. But here, so this is theorem three. Um, well, this is due to uh, well, the construction is based on a result by Danny Neftin and, uh, in 2014, and we are plus some, uh, plus some epsilon due to uh, uh, Giancarlo and myself. Um, the result is the following. Um, so let me be quite brief, but um, so one can find um, a P group H, which is just uh, an extension, well, a, a semi-direct product of two abelian groups, and AI abelian, um, completely explicit. Um, so that if uh, if k contains sufficiently many roots of unity, then there is a, trans a transcendental Brahman obstruction to weak approximation, and there is a transcendental. I will explain what it means right after. Transcend, transcendental 
Brower Manning obstruction to weak approximation. So this is the result. And let me just write explicitly what it means here. It just means that IE, um, if you take the closure of uh, a rational points inside a uh, well, the direct product of all uh, local points. So you can take the, Brauram, the algebraic Brauram manin, manin set here, which in the connected case is, is enough. And this is an equality here. But here, we know that this, well, we know that this is just the Brauram manin set, but these are, are different. So this is the whole, here you take the whole Brauram group, including, so in particular, there is a, an element with, in the Brouwer group of X that is not algebraic. We can write it almost explicitly. And, um, and this one really gives an obstruction to weak approximation. Oh, well, this is not AK, this is K omega. And so this is really different from uh, the connected case or the abelian case. And as, as in the results by uh, the result concerning integral point were also completely different from the one for, for the connected case. Here also we see that it is not enough to understand the algebraic barrel group. We have to understand the whole one, to, uh, even for a quite simple group. I mean, this is just two abelian groups, a split extension of two, of two abelian groups. So, uh, and this is the first example, huh? Mark. This is the first example of such a First example of such a transcendental obstruction in the context of, of homogeneous spaces. And unfortunately, what, well, the algebraic barrier group is really easy to describe in this context. It's just some Galois H1 of some commutative group, but the transcendent, but the whole Brouwer group, including transcendental elements, is more complicated. You, you see the formula with the extensions of group schemes and so on. Uh, so for the while, we, 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 we don't know how to use, well, I think this example contains a lot of uh, information to, to, to give ideas for instance, to prove uh, that the answer to question two is yes, f say for nilpotent groups, for instance. I think it could be possible to, to use this kind of construction here to understand better the case of, say, nilpotent groups. Anyway, so this, these three theorems are somehow, all of them are negative. Uh, the first two are, are negative and this one is Okay, so and so it's positive because we know by the result by Ari that this is an equality. But it is somehow negative that the algebraic part is not enough. But, well, I hope I convince you that there is something to do in this, about these questions. So, so I think the first, the first challenge, well, would be to, uh, yeah, to, to try to prove, to answer question two, so weak approximation, uh, when H is, uh, is a nilpotent group. It should be very, very nice if, you, if we could do this. And um, that is generalize somehow this result without the assumption on the, on the cardinal here and with Barman obstruction. But for the while, we have no idea how to prove it. I think I will stop here. Thank you.